So to understand how muscles generate the forces, let's study muscle um, structures and its contraction mechanism, contraction related units. Okay, for the bone, there are muscles attaches, muscular skeletal system, what we call. And if you um, enlarge the muscle, if you look at the cross section of the muscle, it looks like this, something like bundles are connected in the parallel. Okay, and if you just uh, 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 plugging out of those uh, one muscle, the, the part, the bundle part, it's also composed by many uh, parallelly um, aligned uh, muscle cells. Okay, that's why we call the fascicle. And those muscle cells, if you in, uh, make a zoom on it, then there is another muscle fiber, uh, the muscle uh, contraction unit, which we would call the myofibrils, are connected in the parallel. Uh, structure. So uh, those um, microfibrils are uh, connected by the parallel and those muscle cells are connected by the parallel to, to construct the fascicle and those fascicles are connected to the parallel to um, co construct the muscle. So muscle fibers are aligned in parallel in series. So myofibril has a, a Sim, uh, the very uh, important unit that's called sarcomere. This is the muscle contraction unit. And those sarcomeres are composed by myofilament, actin, and myosin myofilaments. So those uh, smallest um, contraction unit sarcomeres are composed by a fibril, muscle cell, fascicles, and again the muscle. So that's kind of hierarchical structure. So how those myosin and actins are generating forces, generating contractions and forces. That's what we're going to study. So to give you a brief idea, let's just review how those um, the lin engineering linear motors is, is uh, structure looks like. So for the motor generally has a rotational structure, so there's a stationary um, magnet here and then there's a rotor and that changes the uh, electrical field, the current, so that depending on the magnet uh, electromagnetic force relationship, there are force applied and then those uh, rotor rotates, right, the generating the force and torques. Similar to that, um, linear uh, linear guy, linear motor has a flattened uh, magnetic part, and then those um, connecting part is moving part here is now changing the current so that it keeps providing the force to the left and the right. So instead of circular motion, your alignment is kind of um, uh, straight, and though between those contacting parts here, uh, like a not physical contact. Uh, uh, electromagnetic force relationship kind of contact occurs and that is a generating forces. So this is kind of a pretty similar concept for how those sarcomere, actin and uh, myosin filaments are generating the forces. One sort of stationary part and there are some interaction between the actin and myosin filament. That's why I'm going to briefly explain the next slide. Okay, let's examine more about the the detailed structure for the sarcomere. So this is the um, microscope figure for the sarcomere. Looks like a very dark part here. That's thick part, thick myosin filament part. And a uh, thin part is not, you can really see he, uh, clearly here, but those uh, lines here in the, between the thick uh, myosin filament is called actin filament. So pictorial expressions are like a myofibril has a sarcomere unit, the very basic muscle contraction unit, and those are black, uh, no, no, red, uh, thick part is called, uh, called here is a, a thick myosin filament, and those a thin part here aligned parallel to that is a thin actin filament. Uh, I'm actually, there are many good um, picture images on the videos about the muscle contraction mechanism. So I strongly recommend you to look for it, Google for it. And then I uh, borrow the pictures from the Google image. And then I wish I could um, get it from the one uh, uniform sources, but there are many, many good uh, resources. So I actually collected them. And uh, during those procedures, a consistency between the figures are not really um, Good, so please understand that. But I try to match the color, like a myosin representing as a red color, and actin uh, represent as a bluish color. So this is a mechanism how those are uh, those actin and myosin filaments has been uh, relaxed and contracted. So those uh, red part, the thick part, is uh, placed in the center is what called the thick myosin filament. 
Where's the cursor? Okay. And um, thin blue part here is a thin uh, actin filament. And there are some uh, connection between them similar to the linear motor. This is the stationary magnet. And then this is the um, part that you actually provide the um, current changes. So there are some contact in between them that I'm going to explain later. And the structure wise, those thick filaments are connecting to the something like elastic uh, uh, components called titan to this um, ending part, which we call the Z-disc. Okay. And depending on the structure, you have a, something like a bright side in the middle at the end, that's called different name, like H-zone, I-band, etc. that you can refer from the other physiology textbook. So what we are going to focus on is how those um, interaction between the actin and myosin filaments to generate the displacement uh, change. So as you can see here, if, if the center part is actually uh, uh, moving to towards the center, what will happen is this elastic part will increase, but still the overall length will decrease, right? That's how the muscle contraction occurs. So if we look at more um, further about the myosin part, uh, so that's a thick filament, polymer of myosin molecules, and it has a cross bridge. That, that's the important part here. So the cross bridge is the uh, connection part between the myosin and actin, so reddish part and the blue part, those are connected, physically connected by the cross bridge. And it requires the energy, so that is also a binding site for the energy, the ATP. And then with respect to the center, those cross bridges are oriented in the opposite direction, so that the overall length has been um, uh, shrink instead of linear translation. And if you uh, look at the binding site here, look like uh, what, a mitten here? <laughs> okay. So there are binding site for the actin to generate the uh, length changes. And there's also another binding site for the ATP, the energy sources. That's how the basic structure for the myosin filament, myosin molecules. For the actin, the thin filament is a polymer of actin molecules. It looks like this. It's a circular globular protein. And then there are connected in a helical structure, helical chain um, kind of shape. And for those actin uh, filament, there are the binding site uh, noted as a black dot here. It's a binding site for the myosin cross bridge. So currently, it this, in this figure, looks like a red uh, part is, has a, some detachment between the uh, blue part. But for the contraction, those parts will be ha will be in a contact, physical contact with each other. Okay, that's. So to do so, the initially when the muscle is muscles are relaxed, those are, um, binding sites are covered by tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is actually covering, okay, across the uh, actin uh, filament, uh, the covering the binding site. And then when there is a, a signal is coming in for the muscle contraction, which is called by um, generated by the calcium ion. Calcium ion is attached to the tropomyosin, and then here attach it to the tropomyosin and it changes its configuration so that it'll uncover the binding site so that the myosin is ready to attach to it. So, so the calcium ion um, pulls the tropomyosin away so the actin filament is ready to um, get a contact with the cross bridge. Then the cross bridge uh, sliding mechanism occurs. So there is kind of cyclic motion. So you can start any anywhere. So I'm going to just start from here. So the attached I, uh, ADPs has been hydrolyzed to the P and the ADP, which will ready to transfer the energy to the cross bridge. So currently cross bridge is detached. And those detached cross bridge has its um, configuration change so that it can it could bound to the uh, already uh, Expose the binding site of the actin. Okay, so those uh, energized uh, cross bridge has been uh, is bound 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 with the um, actin filament. Then the next step is it does the power stroke. Okay, so kind of uh, compressed spring is released back kind of stuff. So there is an energy stored in the cross bridge, and when it releases the energy ADP and P, that uh, generates actually the rotate uh, motion, the cross bridge stroke motion, physical stroke. So there are actin filament moves or the relative motion occurs. So the myosin moves. Okay. So by adding those movements up, total length of the muscle has been reduced as a muscle contraction, muscle shortening occurs. 
Once the power stroke has occurred, there is, AT, uh, there is a release of ADP and P, so there's another new ATP um, is attached to the myosin uh, um, cross bridge, and that'll detach the um, cross bridge between the uh, myosin, cross, uh, myosin head and the actin. Okay, so now it's going to be re-ready for the next stroke so that ADP is now hydrolyzed as ADP and P and transfer the energy to the cross bridge head so the cross bridge is attached to the actin uh, binding site and then do the power stroke again after spending out all the energy there's a new energy source attached it. by doing so there are detachment between the actin and myosin it's kind of keep circling okay so by doing so, there is a stroke occurs, and those uh, little change of cross bridge movement will add it up to generate the muscle force shortening and the muscle forces. And again, there are many, many good um, references about muscle contractions, like uh, figures and images, and even like uh, videos. So I strongly recommend you to refer to those videos to understand the detailed mechanism. Okay, so it seems like the initiation for the muscle contractions are some kind of cue is starting from the calcium ion, how those calcium ions are controlled or, or cued. That's what I'm going to explain here. So suppose that this is a uh, myofibril, the muscle cells, and then uh, there are many, many sarcomeres attached to the in series, and those uh, muscle fibers are uh, attached as a bundle, the uh, structures as a bundle in parallel. And there are connective tissues covering them. So either um, the sarcoplasmic reticulum colored as a blue here is covering connective tissue. And those are connected by other uh, nerves like a transverse tubule, tubules, right? And also covered by the, uh, the membrane, the muscle cell membrane, right? And from your brain, actually your brain generates the um, electrical pulse, like sending the con uh, control command for the muscle contraction. The form, uh, the nerve per electrical pulse form, we call this action potential AP. And we, when AP uh, arrive to the uh, muscle membrane, those transverse tubules are also generating those uh, electrical signal. Okay, and then when there is electrical signal goes to the transverse tubule, the adjacent sarcoplasm reticulum, some of the ion channel opens, and there are stalled calcium ions are released and diffused. Okay. And those uh, muscle fibers that are lined here in the muscle fibers will getting those calcium ion to uncover the binding site of the actin filament. And then um, the cross bridge attachment occurs and the muscle contraction occurs. So this is how um, APs are generating um, signal to the T-tubules and then those are triggering the release and diffuse with the calcium ion and how those uh, calcium ions um, uncover the binding site and the initiate the um, uh, cross bridge sliding mechanism. So this is a brief structure introductions about muscle cells and it's a contraction mechanism.